It's once again time to look at all the games that I saw end credits roll for from last month. If you're new here, my name's Amanda and I have been challenging myself to clear as many games as possible off my backlog in one year. So let's get started and find out what I cleared last month in April. Kicking off the month with Pixel Cross Story of Seasons, I actually finished this on the first of the month. This wasn't because I powered through it in a rush, more I just finished the final puzzle on this day. Personally, I have always enjoyed Picross. They are logic and number puzzles without any math. Add to that the pictures uncovered at the end relate to Story of Seasons and I was sold. You probably would have known that already if you watch all my content as I recommended this game previously in an upcoming games list because I genuinely only feature things I know I want to play in the future. So I'm happy when I can play them and not only play them but finish them. Back to the game. And I can say that I, for the most part, enjoyed completing the 350 puzzles on offer. I did exclusively play in handheld mode on the Nintendo Switch, and this is where the issues occurred. When I got to the larger puzzles, especially those with 20 rows, it suddenly became difficult to clearly see the boxes. Some of the lines even disappeared outright unless you zoomed in. Speaking of which, zooming in barely helped. Again, mainly an issue when the puzzle had 20 rows because the screen in handheld was too small for it to be comfortably displayed. So keep that in mind if you are a handheld player like myself, you might be squinting here and there to figure it out. Visually too, it was a little bit of a letdown. Whilst I enjoyed completing the puzzles of animals and crops to have them show up in the farm, it was not the best looking game I have ever seen. Not that it needs to be, but I just wanted it to be of a slightly higher quality. The almanac, for example, was much nicer to look through than the farm itself. They did add a nice touch that when the seasons change, the farm changes and so does the colour of the puzzle background, but again, it comes across as looking low budget. Within the game, the music is perfect. You can choose from a selection of Story of Season soundtracks to play along to. So the music was good as expected for a Story of Seasons branded game. Honestly, if you like Story of Seasons and these types of puzzles, you will enjoy the game. I certainly did, I mean I cleared over 300 puzzles, which is no small feat, and I had a lot of fun doing it. Next up is a game I played for review, that video will be linked in the description. This game was Quilts and Cats of Calico. Quick disclaimer, I did receive the game for free. On to the game itself, and it is an online version of a board game where you stitch together quilts for your cat friends to lie on. There is an online mode, offline mode and story mode which is what I finished and is why it is in my completed backlog video. To find out more, go watch the review after this video. The next game I worked through is a little different from what I normally would choose to play. That game being Ghostbusters the Video Game Remastered. I settled on playing this as it was leaving the PS Plus library in the middle of the month and I thought it looked decent. Also, Ghostbusters is having a revival of sorts with new films, so I thought it would be fun to jump into a game based on the original cast. In the game, you play as a rookie Ghostbuster who has to learn the job. How best to do that than to go on missions and capture ghosts? You do this using a number of different weapon types, such as a proton laser to attack the ghosts. Then, once their health is depleted, you must capture them in a trap. Visually, it can get chaotic, but it all looks good and they added in environmental damages. So if you laser a wall, the wall will have a black streak on it. They even play into this with some of the dialogue mentioning costs from damage. To the negatives, the cutscenes are a little janky. The final chapter also bugged out for me multiple times when the Ghostbuster AI stopped following or moving. Also, the cherub angel fight was a pain. I died on multiple attempts and it almost stopped me from finishing the game. 
Honestly, I'm not even sure how I finally opened the gate. Compared to that battle, the final boss was a breeze. If you are a fan of old Ghostbuster movies, you will no doubt enjoy this game. For me, it was a fun time, but something I will probably forget I played in the future, as there were no standout moments. That said, it is a decent adaptation of the franchise, so again, if you love Ghostbusters, don't miss out on this game. Moving on to a game I was secretly excited for. A lot of people put this game down after the demo, but I was excited to try it out for myself. That game being Princess Peach Showtime. I was drawn to the adorable art style and loved the idea of playing Peach in different costumes, which in turn completely changes the gameplay. For the most part, all the costumes feel different, and my favourites ended up being Patissia Peach and Cowgirl Peach. I enjoyed the baking minigames and equally enjoyed the horse riding segments in the cowgirl levels. The other costumes range from a basic detective where you must choose the correct answers through to costumes that play more like a beat em up. Finally, there are more stealth focused costumes where avoiding detection is crucial for completing the level. The game can also be played in a more pick up and play style as each level is rather short so it is perfect to play in bite sized sessions. The main plot is Peach goes to watch a show at a theatre but it has been overtaken by Madame Grey. At one point the game opens up and I actually said out loud, wow. The game just had so much more depth than I was expecting. After clearing the first floor of the theatre, I assumed the remainder of the game would be more of the same. And yes, it was to some extent, but it added more to the objectives. I was no longer just completing each play, but I was now also saving the main actor, Thiet, from the plays, as they were all trapped by the evil Madame Grape. This small expansion on the objective to me was so well done. My least favourite part of Princess Peach Showtime is the performance of the game. The frame rate drops in the loading screen and some cutscenes are noticeable. For me, usually, unless it is really terrible, Frame rate dips just don't bother me. Even pop in while I will call it out, it doesn't usually distract from my experience playing games. But the frame rate in Princess Peach Showtime was actually awful. Like some of the worst I can remember in recent games that I have played. It never affected the gameplay, but maybe the devs should have chosen a static curtain for the loading screen. Honestly, it would have been a better choice. I don't need the loading screen to move in a game like this, especially if you cannot get the loading screen to load properly. It is little things like this that drop the quality. A shame really because it is genuinely my biggest issue with the game. Outside of this, I was having a great time playing through it. Back to the positives, one addition I liked was the chance to buy different patterns for Peach's dresses. Also, you can change Stella's ribbon colour, which changes the ribbon colour Peach uses in the levels. Overall, Princess Peach Showtime falls on the easier side. You just use one button to do all the actions. Other than controlling where you walk, you do not have to think too much. I do think the target audience is likely young boys or girls who have watched the Super Mario Bros movie and liked Peach. The way Peach is portrayed in the game gives off the same can-do-anything vibes. Despite that, as a full-grown adult, I still really liked the game. It was nice to just play something easy that was still fun and had plenty of variety to keep me engaged. It won't be for everyone, but I was glad I decided to play through the whole game. After finishing Princess Peach Showtime, I wanted to play through something completely different. So I finally played Retro Mystery Club Volume 1, The Issei Shima Case. It is described as a mystery adventure game, but I would classify it as a visual novel. You play as a detective that is tasked with solving a murder that happened in Tokyo. As you play through, you must gather clues from finding items or talking to witnesses and solve the case. Despite the perceived interactivity, it really came down to just trying every possible combination to proceed forward when I was stuck. Some parts were easy to know what to do next, but when I didn't, I would just go back to places and re-interview people to see if anything had changed. 
so basically just brute forcing my way through to continue the story. This could provide frustration to some, but be mindful the game is pretty old. It was originally on the Famicom, and even though the English version has only been released for about a year, it still plays like a Famicom game. I did also come across a bug in which the save file would not load. This is on Nintendo Switch, meaning I had to restart the game to finish and I decided to play through in a single session. I was scared it would happen again and I would lose all the progress I had made. Lucky for me, the game is a little over four hours to beat so I was able to read through it all in one night. It may have been faster if I was able to put the clues together and show the right objects to the right people to move the story along without all the random guessing I did. Retro Mystery Club Volume 1, The Isoshima Case is a niche retro game that has an interesting story, but the gameplay just feels old. I do plan to play the next one in the series as it released this year, so while I crossed this off my backlog, I ended up adding the sequel to that list. Finally, onto the game that you all chose for me to complete last month, which was Atelier Riser, Ever Darkness and the Secret Hideout. I am glad this game won the poll because this game was pure joy to play. If you want to vote on a game I cross off my backlog each month, head over to my community tab and you will find the polls there, or subscribe and they should pop up in your feed. The game's story follows Riza, who is a young girl living on an island with her parents. She has two best friends, Lent and Teo, who she spends all her time with. After adventuring to the mainland, they get into some trouble and are rescued by two mysterious travellers. One of them happens to be an alchemist and Riza, after being inspired by them, decides to learn alchemy for herself in order to help others. The main gameplay involves collecting different items in the world and crafting using alchemy. It is a simple gameplay loop, but it is very fun. At least for me it was. The alchemy in this game felt a little lacking compared to other Atelier games. I personally like Atelier Sophie 2's system the best out of the ones I've played so far. In Riser, it just seems very simple and you just had to have had the correct ingredients to craft and that was it. It didn't have the puzzle element some of the other games have. This could either be a good thing or a bad thing depending on how much you enjoy that. I was a little let down but the story and combat was so fun that I didn't mind that I could breeze through the crafting whenever I needed to make something. In the world map there are also a lot of monsters in areas. If you run into one, that will trigger a battle. The battles are a real-time, turn-based style. Time continuously flows and you can choose what action to take when it is your turn. You can choose between a regular attack, using an item or using a skill. Skills require AP or action points to use and these are gained by doing other actions such as a basic attack. You can also set the mode in combat to negative or aggressive. This affects how your team will act when it is their turn. In aggressive mode, they will use AP and perform skills more frequently. In negative mode, they will do more regular attacks. In battles, you can also increase tactics levels with AP. Each increase of a tactics level gives you an extra hit for regular attacks, starting at 1 attack for level 1 and 3 attacks for level 3. At any point in the battle, you can switch which party member you control, so you can try many tactics during combat. For example, if an enemy is weak to one of Lent's attacks, you can switch to him and use that attack each time his turn comes around. During the game, there were some weird difficulty spikes, so at times the balancing did feel off. For example, the rock puppets early on surprised me just how powerful they seemed compared to anything I'd faced prior to that encounter. The game also gets much better when the fast travel opens up from the world map. Unfortunately, this takes five to six hours to get this feature. Prior to this, you have to run to every location or find a board in order to fast travel to certain points. For a game that is almost five years old, it holds up really well. It still looks good even today. It is a pretty game that leans on the cuter side. One thing I actually don't like is Ryza's standard outfit. 
It looks disjointed and I am not a fan of how the jacket moves every time she runs. Luckily, there are a couple of free outfits you can download, so I played using one of those for most of my playthrough. On to the other great part of the game and that is the music. The score is wonderful with tracks that can only be described as pleasant, which for this game fits perfectly, adding to the sweet nature of the story and characters. Atelier Riser is a light-hearted JRPG with a story about friendships that is super cute and it is hard to not have a good time when you jump into this world. If you haven't played it yet, I recommend trying it out. It is just wholesome fun. That is it, the games I played last month. I feel like now I'm starting to struggle with the consistency of playing games and making it all the way to end credits. I played so much in March, I needed to take a breath and slow down so I could actually enjoy the games that I played in April. Perhaps I finally came to the realization that clearing this many games off my backlog is going to be a mammoth task and it feels quite overwhelming. Especially for somebody who rarely rolls end credits, I usually get halfway, three quarters of the way through a game and then my attention moves to the next shiny new game that has come out. I will still continue this series and try to cross off as many games as possible throughout the rest of the year. I just hope I can keep up this steady pace. Bye bye!